This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome once again to our virtual worship service from the historic First Christian Church of Vinton, Virginia. I'm Pastor Brian Geyser and it's been my privilege to welcome you into our sanctuary, empty though it is, um, for these past number of weeks while we've been enduring the shelter at home orders. Uh, here in Virginia, we are still under those orders issued by the governor's office. Uh, it is set to expire uh, June the 10th, unless something changes. And uh, we're glad to be able to continue to bring you these services via our YouTube channel. Uh, many of you have written in and emailed uh, to let us know your appreciation of being able to share these services with you, and we are honored to be able to do that. We're currently looking at possible plans to reopen the church to uh, live worship services after the June 10th date. That would make it uh, around June the 15th, I believe. Uh, so, of course, that is all going to be dependent upon uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and future figures as they come out. But we are putting a plan in place to see what everything would look like as we draw closer to that June 10th date. Uh, until that time, we continue to thank you for welcoming us into your homes and this manner. And it's our joy and pleasure again to be able to worship with you in this way. And now, let's let God speak to our hearts as we enjoy the ministry of music through the organ prelude. <laughs>
because you are the source of all life and love and being, we call you Creator. Because we know the history of your presence among your covenanted people and honor their tradition, we call you Lord. Because our Savior, Jesus Christ, your obedient child, knew you intimately and spoke of you so, we call you Father. Because you are present in the act of birth and because you shelter, nurture, and care for us all the days of our lives, we call you Mother. Because you hold us up and give us strength and courage when we are weak and in need, we call you Sustainer. Because we have known you in our pain and in our suffering, we call you Comforter. Because beyond pain lies your promise of all things made new, we call you Hope. Because you are the means of liberation and the way to freedom for all, we call you Redeemer. Confident that you will hear, we call upon you with all the names that make you real to us this day. The names that create an image in our minds and hearts, an image that our souls can understand and touch. And yet we know that you are more than all of these. May blessing and power and glory and honor be unto you, our God. Be with us in our worship. Amen. For our first lesson, hear now God's word as found in the book of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has a fixed day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And now a reading from the book of Psalm. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter into your house with burnt offerings, and I will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips, and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Today's epistle reading is taken from the book of 1 Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. 
but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. May God have blessing and understanding to the reading of His Word this day.
part of the gospel is really thought-provoking. You may well have never thought about God as the vine grower, but certainly God is the creator and God did plant Jesus in our lives. Through the gospels, we're invited to a more intimate relationship with our Jesus. The four stories give us four different perspectives of what it might have been like to be living as a disciple of Jesus Christ. By reading them and getting engaged with them and engaging them in our lives, we become intimately involved in the messages and we embody the role of a pilgrim accompanied by Jesus on that journey. That also means there's something in this story that might help us to understand our relationship with Jesus and prepare for what is coming as we remember where we are in this church season approaching Pentecost. God is certainly the vine grower, and Jesus is most definitely the vine. Our roles are to be the branches. This so clearly describes our roles in God's mission. God planted Jesus in our lives, and that vine produces branches, and if we are the branches, then we're going to have to deal with that pruning part. Remember, the vine grower is pruning each branch, so it might bear the most and the best fruit it possibly can. That sounds like it's going to hurt. And every branch is cut even if it's bearing fruit now because by cutting it will bear more fruit in the future. If we are the branches, then we have to ask ourselves what exactly is being pruned or cut from our lives. Now, Right at this moment, you might be thinking of some things that are obviously in need of being cut away. Maybe some things we wish someone would cut away from our lives. But what about those things that are weighing us down and as branches, we're at risk of breakage from the weight? It might actually feel good to have some of that removed. Think of what it might feel like to lose some of that stuff from our lives. Might we be better able to be a good, strong, bearing branch, bearing much fruit, if we were not so loaded down and on the verge of breaking all the time? It seems as if there might be many things that fit easily into this category of needing to be pruned, some not so obvious things as well. One way or another, though, we know that a pruning is going to happen, and it probably will hurt to some degree. The end result that we have to keep our eyes focused on, the goal is that we will provide more fruit in the future. Our job here seems to be identifying what in our lives needs to be pruned away. We need to learn to let go. Our job is also to be open to being pruned of things that we wouldn't have thought needed to go. And our job is being open to welcoming grafting because it will make us stronger and more diverse. The hope in this whole business of pruning is the promise of fruitfulness and the assurance that just as Jesus abides in us, we abide in Him. We could all think of many, many things that probably would fit into these categories. The topic on many of our minds these days is about how to be Christians individually and also corporately and what that means. As an example, we know that the sins of racism and classism and sexism and all the other isms keep us from being fruitful because these are all things that set us apart from others. Through Lent and Easter, we've heard the lessons in a context of war, of ecological debates that honor either creation or materialism, and many of us are thinking about what it means to be welcoming and open in our changing neighborhoods around us, we are expected to accept the grafting of a newcomer with the knowledge that joining makes us 
better. As we consider these things, we also need to keep in mind that the gospel tells us that when we take ourselves apart and away from Jesus, we can't do anything. Because He is the vine. We are the branches. In our personal, individual, and our corporate lives, I think we can all agree this morning there is ample evidence for a need of pruning. And our job in the days ahead is to prayerfully reflect and consider what do we identify in our lives that needs to be pruned. Amen and amen. We pray for those who have needs of any kind and 
this day we even pray for the most basic of things for them. Health, food, clothing, shelter, safety and justice. Help us to live out our faith by bringing healing, attention, and love to all of them. Be with the many who have lost jobs and thus suffered loss of income due to the pandemic. Keep our public safety, health care, frontline, and essential workers safe. And give them strength for the journey that they are on right now. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, you bring the opportunity for peace and justice to this world. Look in mercy upon all the nations. We pray especially for Donald, our president, our senators and representatives in Congress, Ralph, our governor, and Bradley, our mayor, and our town council members here in the town of Fenton. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray for your church around the world, that even as we worship in separate places at different times, with different customs and speaking different languages, even so, bind us together into one family and help us to be the body of Christ, to know and to do your will, to love and to serve all of the world and all the peoples you have created. Remember especially Terry, our general minister and president, Bill, our regional minister, our deacons, deaconesses, and elders here at First Church, and all of our members and friends who carry forth your joyful word. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your creation. God, help us to care for all that you have entrusted us with. Make us faithful stewards with all of your resources. Guide our actions as they affect the earth that we live upon. Even now, in all our different places, in all of our different languages, we join our voices with the voice of Jesus, who taught us to pray as he spoke these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our members and friends have continued to financially support our work here at First Christian, we have been able to continue to support both local and international missions. Let us take this moment to give God thanks for these gifts.
Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. We confess to you that we have sinned against you. We've done things that we know we should not do, and we have left undone those things we should have done. We seek and ask your forgiveness. In this moment, we know and claim the promise that through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory that you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said the blessing and gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ, that dying you destroyed our death and in rising you restored our life. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they might be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that each of us burning with your Spirit's power might be a people of hope and justice and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon them in your hearts with thanksgiving.
misery will find your mercy. Let the day come when our poverty will find your riches. Let the day come when our path will find the way to your house. Let the day come when our tears will find your smile. Let the day come when our joy will find your heaven. Let the day come when your church will find the kingdom. May you be blessed, Father, for that day when our eyes will find your face. Throughout all the time of our lives, you have not ceased to come before us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and brother. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. In the power of the risen Lord, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. God bless you.